I too was impressed with the, the boys um, football team winning homecoming, and that's the best time to win is for homecoming. Um, thank you all for coming out. Thank you. thank you all for coming out. It's nice to see you. Uh, rescue Ranger, Mr. Ernest. It's always happy to see you, Mr. Mesa. <coughs> all right, man. I wish we could have some more participation. We have a couple teachers. You have to be. <laughs> <laughs> It's nice to see all the uh, junior high sports getting in action. That's always uh, fun and awesome because in two years we've gone quite a long way. So congratulations to everybody. And oh, I forgot. My granddaughter's on the volleyball team and she was named Captain, so they won. Captain Kirk. Yeah, Captain Kirk. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we'll move on. EF Educational Tours, RHS. My name is Amy Marcardini, and I'm a new hire um, over at the high school. And I teach English 10, I teach 10, 11, <laughs> sorry, forgot what thing. And I just wanted to present a program to you that, for the whole district, for students to be able to travel and see firsthand what we're teaching them in our history books and Spanish books and English books. So there's a short video I want to show you first, and then can help you with some, if you have any questions or some, some more details.
By the way, she wants to brag. She was the advisor for the juniors who won. We won. And that's why they won. <laughs> So they're in London, <laughs> and there's <laughs> Big Ben is in the background. Um, do you want me to just kind of talk through it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. These are just uh, students that have been taken. This actually is London. And this is a company called EF Tours. They've been in around for 50 years. And they set up tours for you to take students all over the world. And we have a tour set up to go to Belize in Central America. And it's the shortest tour and the cheapest at this point. So we thought, thought we could introduce something with it. We could help the kids afford. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. How because, much is cheap? Um, it is, do you remember what it was the last time you worked? 34. I think at this point it's 3400 So my plan is to help whoever signs up to help them fundraise to pay for the trip because I realize it's going to be expensive for, for kids to be able to go. And it's definitely not going to Mr. Adams would like to open it up on his campus as well. So for our students to go. And um, for every six students that go, you get a chaperone. So they're very well chaperoned. This company is extremely safe. Uh, there is someone waiting for you at every stop. There is someone to take you around. You're never, we're never alone. So it's a company I've traveled with about six times with different schools. My own children have gone on their own with other schools. I've sent them with other teachers. It's that safe. So um, one of the country beliefs we're going to uh, has the Mayan ruins and it has the second largest barrier reef in the world. So they're gonna be seeing things that they are actually studying in their textbooks. And instead of the pictures on, on their laptop, sorry, instead of the pictures that they're seeing, we actually get to take them to them and they get to stand there and see it for themselves. So it's a really amazing opportunity um, to actually get the kids involved. Instead of just showing it to them and telling them about it, we actually get to involve them with it, and they get to touch it, feel it, see it, hear different languages, and eat different food. And it's one of those things that we're actually, it, that's education at its core. I just absolutely love taking these kids to these countries. So I've been to New York with this company. I've been to DC twice. I've been to Spain. I've been to Italy with this company. And they were amazing. So these are actually the students, and they're kind of giving you a feel for the trip that they're actually on. And so you, if you're really interested in this, this is actually just EFTours.com. And it's the main video on the screen. So when you get home, you could probably pull it up on your own laptop and just kind of get a feel for it. 
Where do we pick up? Chaperone application? <laughs> Actually, your wife told me you would want to go. <laughs> um, that is something you can come chat, chat with me about. I'd love to take you. I'd love to take any of you to come see. Actually, that first trip um, to, for the district would be awesome to take any admin board members. You will fall in love with this company and these trips. And just watching the kids, that was the favorite for me when I came around the corner and I saw the Coliseum. I may or may not have cried a little. Just to actually see it for yourself, it's just amazing. So I would love to take any of you with me. You would probably never say no to another country trip. Is there a minimum? No, um, for a private tour where it would just be our district, you would need to fill 42 spots. That fills the, the tour bus. If you don't fill the 42 spots, they join you with another group from somewhere in America that also could not fill their trip, and they put you together and they're on the same trip. And every time I've gone, I've never been on a full trip, so I've always shared with another group. It has always been, actually you leave good friends. A lot of the kids are Facebook friends forever. Um, you spend a lot of time with them, so. And how and long is the trip? The, the Belize trip is seven days. Seven days. The Italy trip I went on was 11. I mean, they range. There's a trip you can go on that is three weeks long. They're very expensive, but you can go through and pick. This was just one of the cheaper trips, less time that we thought would be easier to introduce so that the kids weren't gone quite so long. You can hear me a little bit. <laughs> Did they have to watch Taken before we go? No. <laughs> <laughs> we don't watch any bad movies before we go. Yeah, I'm sure they know what to do. <laughs> 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 language spoken Belize is actually the only English-speaking country in Central America. Oh, that's interesting. That's being correct. Cool. Is there another one? I've been to all of them and they all speak Spanish, I thought. <laughs> uh, they were a English yes. colony. Yes. So their official language is English. Yes, that's English. true. Creole. But mm -hmm. they actually speak by this. Yes, they're out in, and we'll be going to mine in, it, out by the mine ruins. We'll be going to those at all. No, oh, but the people themselves. Yeah. Not the people in the hotels. No. The people themselves right. speak by it. So he needs to go with you? No, I've been there. <laughs> I grew up there. I lived there for 10 years. Okay. Yes, so. So, yeah, it's, I was really <coughs> impressed with the place. Uh, one, if anybody has not gone out of the United States, um, it's incredible the luxuries you have. That they do not, and they don't care. <laughs> They are happy with what they have, which is very little. Um, the um, I had always thought that Belize actually spoke it, spoke Spanish. I was listening to some people that were just sitting there having a conversation, and I'm trying to figure out what they were speaking because it sounded like it should have been Spanish. It wasn't, and I walked over and I asked them what they were. They told me what their native language was. And it's a, a derivative of the original Maya language. And um, so I was really impressed that they actually kept the culture, even though they were a colony of somebody else. So I was kind of impressed with that. Anything else? Anything else? Do you have any other questions? School reports, Mr. Nat Adams. Glad to be here. My daughter did play on the, the Junior Powder Puffs Club, but she was in no way responsible for the victory. She didn't listen to any of the coaching points that I made her. <laughs> screaming from the end zone or from the stands. You can't cover buddy, anybody at the back of the end zone. And she just didn't listen to that. <laughs> but she had a great time. Um, just a plug for the F tour. My son, my oldest son, when he was in the eighth grade, 
went with Mrs. Mongardini and a couple of the staff members in a large group to Washington, D.C., and he loved it. Still talks about it. We still have all the pictures. It was a very important uh, educational opportunity for him as he was growing up. So I would, my daughter then went the next year, so I would recommend that for, for anybody. Uh, it wasn't EF Tours, but Amy says EF is better than World Strides, so I trust her. <laughs> but it was a great opportunity. All right, to my report, I just wanted to thank the district, everybody from all the sites who demonstrated such love and kindness during our, our uh, tragedy with, with Sylvia Salazar. It was a, a very difficult time. Uh, I was able to attend the funeral and, and talk with some of the family members and just see how they were dealing with it. They are very grateful for the support also that came from this district. Um, it was just a, a great opportunity for everybody to pull together. My secretaries took it uh, the hardest on campus, and, and they were also very grateful for all the help that was supplied by, by everybody, by this Southern Kern family. So very appreciative of everybody's efforts. Um, they came together really nicely. Camp Keep is getting closer. Uh, we just had a Guido's fundraiser yesterday, so thank you to Guido's. I got a little fatter yesterday, so. Oh well, all in the name of Camp Keep. <laughs> So we are, we're still in need of counselors, um, and we've, like, like Ivy said earlier, we've got a couple of fundraisers coming up in the next week, so we are still going strong. Uh, our school counselor, Ida Jansen is our new school counselor. We share her with Roseman Elementary and West Park. She's over there one day a week, and she's on our site three days a week. Um, just more and more students are receiving really solid help from Ida. Uh, academic counseling, social counseling, uh, kids who've just been depressed and need someone to talk to, they're able to go see Ida. Um, we're just very grateful that she's on these campuses. She's doing a wonderful job, and just speaking from my own personal experience at Tropico, uh, she's doing a great job there. She serves as the AVID site team coordinator, she's on our leadership team, and she'll also be on the school site council. And she's just, she's proactive in everything that she does. She communicates very well with our staff members and relates really well to our students. So we are very grateful um, that we were allowed to have a school counselor this year. And we are throwing everything we can at her. <laughs> our AVID program continues to, to grow and, and, and get stronger. We have some AVID trips planned this month, uh, going to different colleges and things. Our teachers, our avid elective teachers, have been going to conferences. Uh, Mrs. Stevenson just went to one that she was just really, really excited about. It was good to see her come back so excited and enthused about it. Uh, they're working well together. All Tropico students have the avid binders, and they're doing their best. I say they're doing their best to get used to the system. Um, I heard there was a petition. My son came up and said, Dad, there was a petition. Uh, to get rid of the Abbott binders, and they asked me if I'd sign it. I said, no way, I'm the principal's son. So, <laughs> they, uh, it, was, it was the eighth graders that were revolting for a short time there. Um, they are hard to, you know, they're big giant binders, but uh, all of the staff, I've got very positive feedback from the staff on how well it's helping a lot of the kids stay organized. So, we're, like I said, every student on campus, every single student has a binder and is being taught those organizational strategies. Special education, we've got two special education trips planned this month, uh, the Tapia Pumpkin Patch. It may not sound like much, but they, they love these trips, they learn these life skills, they learn to socialize with other people, they purchase things when they go. We've expanded it to Mrs. Irish's class, so we're, we're basically tripling the students that we normally take. Still isn't a lot of kids, it's about 20 kids total. But uh, Tom Cantor, our, one of our special education teachers, he's kind of leading this charge. He did these trips last year, and you'll notice on the report that he, he has his students recycle. He takes them around from room to room, they come in, they introduce themselves, they get the recycling, they shake hands, they say thank you, so he's, he's doing really well at teaching these kids some, some life skills that they'll need later, later on as they grow up. So we're very happy that that's going on and that they're allowed to do that. Uh, student recognition, in addition to the 61 students that Ivy spoke about, We've been awarding fearless awards, so our staff nominates every month, uh, or sorry, every week. And right now we've got over 50 students that have been nominated for the fearless award, and then each week we choose three students 
Um, one gets a t-shirt, the, the grand prize is a t-shirt and a treat, and the others get treats. Uh, the other two get treats, so um, we're, we're doing well with that, and our staff enjoys, they just write what the kid did on the back, and so we read, we read what they did, and it's funny to see some of the, uh, some of the things that these kids are, are willing to do now. So it's, it's been a good program for us, and we're going to keep doing it all year long. Attendance, September attendance average was 95.93%. That's, that's going up. We've been able to get all the students that never showed up off the books. So that's why you see the jump in percentage. And our enrollment is at 681. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. So uh, right now, attendance is at Rare Earth is at 52. And attendance is up a little bit at Abraham Lincoln, 104. We do have a few extra students who are participating in uh, some sports. I have other, other students asking. Uh, we, you know, we talked about that before. I have a few students at Independent Study who are playing football. And we have some playing some other sports too, which is good. And so it's a good opportunity. I did take a couple of our students that we liked at Rare Earth over Independent Study, but it's good. They're able to play football. That's a good thing. So things are going well. Uh, if you if you ever have an opportunity to come over and check out the classrooms at Rare Earth, I think it's uh, improved a lot um, in the sense that the students are, you can go in there and watch students and they're quiet and, and doing their work. And, uh, and so it's, it's a good thing. Teachers are great there. Uh, teachers have been, they're very positive. Uh, you know, anytime we have meetings, they always come up with good ideas, that we're always working together, and so it's, it's a very positive environment for the students, which the students at Alted uh, need, that, uh, need that type of influence. Uh, one thing that we're going to start doing is having our students actually uh, start doing presentations more. Uh, something, we have them do projects at the end of their, you know, they do their computer work and then they have to do a project where we're going to start implementing some actually some presentations where they actually use technology to kind of go along with this the fearless thing getting up in front of people and doing a presentation so maybe it's a great maybe that will be the next showcase so we're going to have uh we're having students we're going to have students start doing that i think uh, being able to speak in front of others is a, is a good opportunity and it's a good skill to develop and uh, teachers are on board with that we're still using our advisory period, uh, helping with student progress. During that period, we actually have a counselor from the high school coming over every Tuesday, which is great to meet with the students, evaluate transcripts, you know, talk to them about other issues they may be having. So uh, very grateful uh, to have that support. And we have Mr. Schrader, Caleb Schrader, from the high school comes over during their last period and works with our students. And it's great. I mean, Caleb works with all, all, all of our students, he does a wonderful job. Um, any students that will stay, he'll, he'll tutor them. Students from um, Rare Earth and from uh, Abraham Lincoln. Doing the driver's ed program again with the, along with the high school, um, so students are able to get, uh, take the, the online portion so they can do the permit and get a test. You know, that's important, you know, I, it's important for these kids. It's one of those things that you need in life to be independent is actually get a driver's license and drive a car. And when you drive a car, you have a driver's license. And so that's a, that's a, you know, a big thing that I, I'm, I'm, I want to push. So, Student of the Month program, it's, we continue to do that. We don't have 60 because we don't have that many students. We have we have one for each, each teacher every month. And it's amazing that these high school kids, it, it's a big deal to them. Maybe it's because they, a lot of these kids maybe haven't had this opportunity. But there was a girl, and I was up there, and, and she was visibly upset that she didn't get it. And it, it, was, it was sad, but it was Mr. Bart. I was like, oh, man, I was thinking about it, but I want to give this other student. So I'm like, keep working at it, you'll get it. But it, it's neat, though, that something so simple as that and a you know a shirt and whatever else they're very they want to get but it motivates them that's good it's, it's a good it's positive and um, it's good for them we also have ROTC 
something we've uh, talked about before. We have another student that's we just enrolled and she wants to participate. She wants to go in the military. Uh, Major Tanksley has been very positive about the students there. Uh, very happy with what they're doing. And so I'm, I'm glad it gives them opportunities to develop leadership skills and, and maybe and maybe they'll have that, maybe they'll go into the military. So that's been a very positive thing. We also, we're, we've started using the Remind uh, program. It's a where we text. It's been pretty good. We're sending out messages to uh, parents, you know, because people, they respond to text. And that's been a, that's been positive, getting the information out. We've also implemented a program in collaboration with Tehachapi, uh, we owe a program, a federal program. We've, we're getting a couple of our students jobs through this program. It's a federally funded program where they give them like a, so many hours that they'll pay for, and if, and if the, the, the business likes what they're doing, they'll hire them on. So we have a couple students that we're getting on with that, which is a great thing because all these kids have showed interest in getting jobs. They still don't know really where to start and how to, and how to do it. So it's a great, great program. So everything at Rare Earth is and Abraham Lincoln has been, has been going well. Um, staff's, staff's wonderful. If you ever want to come by and see it, oh, you could also come by and you can see the Mr. Bartels garden. And it's great because he has kids going out there and they weeded it really well. So the weeds are all cleaned up. They're out there. They get out there in the morning and they're, and they're working. And he's teaching them some things. Mr. Bartel's a farmer. He's uh, so it's it's kind of cool that he can pass some of those skills on to, to these kids. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Rodi of Roseman High School. <laughs> <laughs> Rosemont High School, we've had a, a joyful and busy and exhausting past week. The powder puff on Thursday, the game on Saturday, and then the dance on, or excuse me, game on Friday and dance on Saturday. I must say I was impressed highly with the floats. They're starting to get to the comp competition level and trying to outdo the others. We even had a two-story float going by, so that was impressive with lights and all decked out. Also very impressive with the dance, I believe at least with my prior time of being in Rosemont High School in the past two and a half years, it's the most students I've ever seen at uh, the dance. And the nice part about it, they were all dressed up in lines. It was really nice, nice formal dresses. The young men didn't have, have sagging pants or anything like that. They were dressed up with nice ladies. Very stressful young men also waiting at the gate with roses, still waiting and waiting and constantly. So we had fun teasing those young men and waiting for their dates. But uh, it all went out well. Very impressive. The spirit seems to be increasing. We're grateful for all the advisors in our ASB. Thank you very much. Curriculum is doing well. Uh, we're on task and we're working on our offline accesses. Those are going great. We have an amazing site today on Tex. They go by the name of Sean 1, Sean 2, and they get offended if you don't call them by the names of Sean 1, Sean 2. I think it has to do with their connections to uh, Captain Kirk and so forth. So there we go. Early college, we've had, we have the most classes of college we've ever had on our campus right now. Uh, we're trying to maintain that. We're trying to grow it steadily, but uh, with strength. So make sure we're not going overboard. Um, students are loving the classes, they really are. We're grateful for that. We're grateful for the support that we're getting from the Toledo Superintendent. Communication outreach, we're doing very well. Uh, we did, as was stated, we did have the Bakersfield, California come out and do uh, an excerpt on our college classes and enrolled down extensively for the laptops. This was great. It was an amazing thing. That's where all of the questions went. She did some uh, pictures with respect to her amazing phone and realized uh, once the piece hit to her editors, they liked it so much they sent out the professional photographer who happened to come on the day of our cover book. So uh, she was jazzed actually our um, newspaper reporter. It was supposed to go out this past weekend. It's actually going to be out this week before it goes. Just finished meeting uh, yesterday over at Hemlock Valley College. Rosemont High School is once again in the lead for an advisory ad hoc for ABC. They're allowing us to participate. This is our second year in leadership role of uh, offering suggestions, anything we're asked for, guidance with respect to K-12, and how Hemlock Valley College can help. 
it's a nice opportunity. There's roughly around 20 to 24 business leaders and also community and charters and special events. And uh, ourselves and one other school is the only represented schools for K through 12 on the advisory. After that, we finished, I instantly ran over to an ABA 6 adult education meeting to further into the grant funding. I'm still looking positive with respect to the next three years and a lot of money. And right now, we're working out some bills and negotiating some things with uh, those business partners. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Nino Torres of Rosemary Elementary. Good evening. Uh, enrollment at Roseman Elementary is at 841, so we've grown by eight since the last week when we turned in our report, and we're still enrolling new students. Um, our students are being recognized for their first quarter achievements at award assemblies that will be held on October 20th, the 22nd, and the 23rd. You're all invited. Um, on the 20th, we'll be honoring our kindergarten and first graders. On the 22nd, we'll be honoring our 2nd and 3rd graders, and on the 23rd, our 4th and 5th graders. All of our assemblies are scheduled for 8.15 and 9 a.m. Um, as we had reported last month, we have started a new character building program, and we're very excited. Uh, we'll be recognizing our students with character building certificates and an ice cream party this Friday at 1 o'clock. So if you're available, I understand it's supposed to be warm or hot again, stop on by, we'll serve you a double scoop. Um, attendance has been our goal for this year, and we're very happy to announce that we again have received two bicycles donated by a chorus man insurance company that will be awarded at the end of the year for every student who has perfect attendance. And this year we're perfectly clear with the parents, perfect attendance means you're not absent, you're not late, and you don't leave early. So there, we covered all of our loopholes and we made them nice and tight. Um, our PTA has developed a calendar of events for the entire year. I've enclosed a copy on the back of this report. Um, they hosted our back to school dance two weeks ago. It was a lot of fun. We had a lot of great music, great food. But the best part is it made all of our new families feel like they're a bigger part of the RES family. And a lot of them just walked away just saying how much fun they had that night. So they're looking forward to the Halloween dance at the end of this month as well. Um, our students had enjoyed what little time we were able to afford them in the computer lab, but again, with our increased enrollment, we are looking to um, convert our computer lab into a temporary classroom to house our new fourth grade class. It has grown, uh, fourth grade has grown considerably, so we're going to um, be putting them in there beginning October the 19th. Uh, we're very excited about the new teacher we were able to hire, and she comes to us um, very well qualified. She has a Master's of Education, so I am extremely grateful that we lucked out on that arena. Um, we held our first student council campaign this year. Um, all the students who threw in their hats and submitted their nomination on time, they wrote their speeches, which they delivered during lunches. Uh, they created posters to hang around the school to campaign. It was a great experience. We held our election last Friday, September the 25th, and then we, we were able to announce the winners at that afternoon. Um, the students who were elected were Owen DeVita as president, Alexis Solis as vice president, Judy Russell as secretary, and Natalia Samora as treasurer. I had planned to roll this program nice and slow. Um, president DeVita has already submitted his three-page proposal of things that he would like to see implemented at RES across the board, not only in the front office, in the classroom, on the playground, the cafeteria, and I'm sure he'll be presenting here one of these months to let the board know what he'd like to see happening at RES as well. There is nothing shy about this little guy. Um, our next step with them um, is to prepare for the election of grade level representatives. We already have several grades that say that they'd like to be part of this process, so the next process is our executive board is going to be working with each individual grade level for representatives to go on a student council. And then lastly, our Farm to Fork, our farm to fork program out of UC Davis. Um, they're sending us additional lessons now to include our winter vegetables. We're planning a cleanup day on October 24th to get our vegetable beds cleaned out. 
Um, my office staff and I are very excited because we're actually going to be given a vegetable bed, so we're going to be putting in some vegetables so we can be a part of the process as well. Um, unfortunately, my student council couldn't make it here tonight. They have prepared a basket with what we've harvested so far. So I'm going to make sure they accompany me next, next board meeting, and then if we were allowed, we'll just make a short presentation so that you guys all have some vegetables to take home with you on that night. So that's what's going on at Rosemont. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you. Kathy Wilson, West Park Elementary School. Happy fall. It's that time. We thought it was going to be cool, and now it's not going to be cool again, so we have to get ready for that. Um, since our last report, um, our, our uh, enrollment has actually grown by a few. We're at 909 now. Our, um, our attendance is up to 97 percent, 97 plus point something. So we're, we're working on keeping that up. Um, we, we have a great attendance clerk who takes care of making sure that our kids are addressed. Um, I make phone calls and send emails to parents who have frequent flyers, you know, late into the office so that we can have that communication and they understand exactly why it's so important to make school important to them to be there. Um, we actually had a lot of parents show up for the SES fair to see what type of tutoring services we have available in the district, what we're offering up. Um, more than 100 applied and um, we were able to give 100 slots, so we were happy to offer that up um, um, on behalf of the district, so they're very thankful for that. Had a lot of wildlife on our campus. We've had two snakes, a little bat, which I called uh, animal control for, and they assured me that it did not have rabies. Um, and then we also had scorpions, and then the other day we had a little mud hen visit us, and she planted herself square in the middle of our quad, and Mr. Mark, our custodian, was kind enough to remove him and deliver him back to the little pond next to the school. So we've had a lot of excitement. Our Popcornopolis fundraisers, you can see, um, Mr. Mesa knows the exact numbers, but I know it was over 7000 that we raised. $9,000 that we raised. We were able to take 50% of the profits, which is really huge. Not as much as last year, but we're going to try to get better. We've also been able to bring some money into our school with box tops as well. Um, our West Park PTO has a couple of things coming up. We have the Monster Mash Dance on the 30th, and on the 31st we're going to be at the West Side Church for their Fall Festival and Trunk or Treat. We'll be decorating uh, a trunk and be giving out candy. Not candy. We're hoping to give out toys because there's a lot of candy out there. We're trying to keep our kids fit, so... Maybe not so much candy, but goodies instead. Um, we've given out three fearless shirts to a first, a second, and a fourth grade student. Um, we want to amp it up a little bit. I was really impressed with Mr. Mr. Adams' idea of how he's giving out more t-shirts by having teachers actually, actually recommend kids for fearlessness. So that's something that we'll certainly um, explore. We're still giving out gold tickets. We do school-wide Pledge of Allegiance. We have two kids from every um, grade level come in each day to lead the entire school with the Pledge of Allegiance, so it's a really communal thing, and the kids enjoy it. Um, it is a motivating thing for them. Um, we actually had today Miss Mose's first grade class was the very first class to be recognized for 30 days straight of perfect attendance, so that's, that's really something to holler about. And they, as they receive those, as they attain those days, 10, 20, 30, and beyond, um, the class, every student in the class gets a prize. And I asked the question today of Desiree, our attendance clerk, does anyone ever get beyond like 50? She said, we've actually gotten over 100 last year. One class got over 100 days of perfect attendance. I thought that was unheard of and actually pretty incredible. So I was very impressed with that. Um, our, PT, um, our PE is actually structured now to include our special ed students. And our PE teacher is also... Um, working directly with our APE, Mr. Gonzalez, from uh, Tropico. So she's actually working with him to just figure out ways that we can integrate our special ed kids more into our program. Um, they, they need to be included as much as possible, and, and they are, but we have some that have really special needs. They have certain exceptionalities that preclude them participating in regular PE, so we're seeing what we can do to include them more. In terms of um, our grade level meetings were held last week, and I met with um, each grade level uh, with all the, all the team, not just the grade level leaders, and we discussed um, 
focus really on student needs, individual student needs, as well as their grade level needs. They divided their students up according to their levels of readiness for um, needing strategic intense instruction and then needing just regular instruction. They're middle of the road kids. Nothing's wrong with that. We have a lot of average kids and that's, that's really where we at least want them to be. And then those kids that are just needing enrichment, they may have above average grades and perhaps gifted students. Um, so they were able to um, tell me what they need, how they implement strategies in the classroom to meet the needs of all those varied student needs, and then um, what they need as a grade level for training. Um, they really spoke volumes about the professional development that we had this past month, and um, it kind of springboarded from there what else we might need for trainings, and I've talked to Mrs. Hargis about some things that they, they shared with me as far as ideas. A big thing is really technology. We've, we've invested so much money in technology on all of our campuses that a lot of the teachers were saying, well, I have my board and I have my Mimeo and I have my short throw, and I've gotten some training, but now I need more of that training. They really want to take it to the next level and just be a little more fearless with how they're implementing those, those pieces of technology in their classrooms. So I'm hoping that we can certainly um, help them with that. Um, things that we're doing in the future, Mr. Mesa and I did update the disaster plan, as I mentioned last time. Since our last meeting, we had a container delivered to our campus, and we plan on using that as our, disa our disaster shed. Um, still looking at investigating some of the needs that we may have um, to make sure that our school is indeed prepared for a disaster. And not just for our school, but for outreach into the community. If, if there's need in the community and our school say isn't impacted so much, we want to be able to share what we have with those in the community as well. Um, Things that we need on our campus, I left a list on the bottom, and um, hope that you take the time to give them your consideration as a board, and uh, I appreciate your consideration. Any questions? Okay, thank you. I'll go fast. I'm like, come on, there's a half an hour. <laughs> our enrollment is at 18, and our attendance is at 84 percent. Um, we're working on that. Some things happen this month, and um, uh, community health is really important, and so I, I learned that. So we're working on our 84 percent. It'll be better. Um, on October 28th, from 5:30 to 7, we're going to have our first. Um, parent education meeting and we plan on doing that monthly. Our first meeting is going to be um, addressing CPI, which is crisis preventer, prevention intervention and why the school would, would ever need to use that. And um, talking to the parents, that's their number one concern. Why would you have to use CPI? What does that really mean? And so we really want to bring the parents in and educate them on what that means and what that looks like. Um, so we're excited about that. Um, curriculum, our teachers, uh, have really stepped up to the plate in this. I'm really proud of them. It's not easy for my staff to create lesson plans and develop curriculum. Every single one of my teachers has at least four grade levels. And so in order to really make sure they're hitting those common core standards, it's, it's a huge feat for them. So they're really doing a great job. Um, last week they came together, all three classes, and did a whole solar project in science. It was really cool, and the kids did great, and they, and they loved it. So that's uh, curriculum. Uh, equipment and IT, our technology is great. We have everything that everybody else has. I'm very grateful for that. So um, our teachers use it. I don't ever walk through, there's three classrooms, so I walk through a lot. <laughs> and um, someone's always using the technology. So I'm really appreciative that we have it and that they use it. Um, the teachers, of course, are using the bigger field area for PE and the students love it. Um, and I know that PE is working very hard on my shade structure and my play structure. So I'm eagerly awaiting the purchase of that. Um, Hint, hint. Okay. Um, <laughs> but I am grateful for all of this time. Uh, the maintenance department is amazing. Uh, a huge shout out to them. As time goes on and we're in the school, I realize like, oh, maybe that cabinet needs a lock. Or maybe this needs, you know, to be able to be shut all the time. And they just always come out the very next day or that same day. They fix it. They're very positive about it. So we're very grateful for them. Um, our new high school start, teacher starts Monday, and I'm beyond excited about that, so we're very excited to have him starting. Um, the students are doing really well, and uh, we do our monthly awards. Uh, ours this month was on September 29th, 
and it always surprises me. It doesn't surprise me now, but when I first started, it always surprised me. Um, the first thing I get when I say I work when I worked at uh, Rare Earth or now here about parent involvement. I never had a problem getting parent involvement, and I don't here either. And so when I call a parent and I say your student's getting an award, they come, and 100% of the parents I called came. So. Um, not that like that's a huge number, but I was really proud. And our fearless for positive change student was a high school student. Um, last time we had done a younger student, so of course it was very positive, and I was a little on the fence about how the high school classroom would feel about this. How, how are they going to re respond? And uh, they were fantastic, and they were cheering and screaming for the student, and uh, it's a really big deal to them to get this shirt. And, uh, and we give a little spiel about how they've made a positive change and so a lot of these students, um, they've known each other, this is their second year in the program, and so for me to be able to stand up there and say, this is where they started, and this is the change that they made, and they've been fearless in that, it's hard to make changes, it's hard for any of us to make changes. And so um, his mom was there, and she was in tears, and it was just a really beautiful moment for a second, and that's really why we're there, is um, to build them up and ship them out, really. <laughs> come in and come out. Uh, we are gonna do our first field trip to Tapia's Pumpkin Patch. The whole school's gonna go, I wasn't sure about the high school, but they wanted to go, and they said so. We're going to do a buddy system, and they're going to um, help with managing the younger students. So we're excited about that, um, and that's kind of it. That's going on at our campus. Any questions? Thank you, Mr. Quell. Did not really have much of a report tonight, but. Uh, Mr. Torres reminded me. I uh, really appreciate the fact that the district has been very good, very proactive in addressing class size issues in a number of places. He mentioned it with the fourth grade classes at Roseman Elementary. Um, and they, the district didn't wait for RTA to come complaining about the big class sizes. They recognized it ahead of time. They had a plan and they, they addressed them and just collaborated with RTA. And we really appreciate that. That's, uh, um, it's excellent. And I wanted to come up and welcome Ivy to the board. Um, and, and I'm going to mention to you, uh, you did an outstanding job, by the way. Um, and luckily, she doesn't have any homework tonight from her math class. But, um, <laughs> but I wanted to mention to you, you might want to thank Mr. Van Buskirk and Mr. Weinstein and all of the board, because I came to them last spring with the help of Mr. Adams and, and brought the idea of a cheer program, a cheer team to Tropico, and asking them to pay for it and pay a lot of money for it. Your uniforms are going to be here any time now. Um, but Ivy is on our cheer team, um, our, our inaugural cheer team, so uh, congratulations for that and look forward to seeing you. Lots of board meetings. Thanks very much. Thank you. CSCA? Comments from the public? No comments. Communications, Mr. Weinstein. Um, just a couple of things in a short presentation. Um, Ivy and everybody else would like to know that I'm sure that uh, CIF today announced that they have voted and um, cheerleading is now going to be a CIF competitive sport. So our cheerleading will not just be a cheerleading group, but it will be a cheerleading team that will compete against other high schools, uh, just like any other sport. So I uh, thought that was uh, something that we found out today was very good. And our uh, athletic director made sure that I knew about it right away. She wanted me to uh, make sure I knew that. Um, also, uh, go ahead. So we, this week, uh, we'll be mailing out our SBAC or our, um, our new testing. It used to be the STAR testing, now SBAC testing um, that our students took. Uh, so with that, we have a cover letter. And the reason we're kind of going over this just real briefly, and we'll have a much uh, more in-depth um, breakdown of the numbers. But it's important to know that this is the first reporting of these. The first year it was waived, so we never got test results. And this is the second year. And these are the test results that were actually being reported to parents, as well as a cover letter um, and a new format of receiving the results. So let's go to the next screen. So how is this a little bit different? Well, one thing is 300 to 1,000 was the star testing scoring range. Uh, now we our scores are ranging from 2,000 to 3,000 on the new test. Um, overall scores are reported a little differently, and this might throw parents off a little bit. So before it used to be below basic, basic proficient or advanced, 
And now it's, um, the, the wording's a little different. Now they'll get the four scores, but it will be standards not met, standards nearly met, standards met, and standards exceeded. So um, it's a little bit different, and sometimes, um, you know, parents might not understand a standard nearly met in basic uh, the differences, so it, it's, it's something that the CDE wants to make sure that our parents know about. And so they've actually produced a cover letter that will go out with the testing scores. Next week. So this is a sample of what uh, they will be getting the parents. It will contain not only just the basic information about the student, it will contain their score, where in the range they fall on the bottom, and to the right there is an, um, an explanation of what the actual score means. And then go to the next one. And then um, also the same thing with mathematics. So the first screen was um, your ELA, and then the second one, mathematics. Can we go back to the first screen? There we go. So on the right is kind of a cover letter also from Mr. Torlinson, our, our uh, superintendent of education for the CDE. Um, it's very similar to our cover letter, but our cover letter is on our letterhead and signed by myself. Go ahead. And one more. And so here they give you um, a breakdown of the 11th grade early assessment program status. And that is because the whole design of the SBAC testing and the new standards and the common um, core standards is to get us towards college. So in 11th grade, you are the closest towards college. So this is where we have our comprehensive plan for student success. And it goes into pretty much detail about that. So there's a lot for the parents to read and absorb. And we're sure that we'll be getting a lot of questions about this when the um, scores hit and the parents get these letters. But we uh, are prepared to, you know, answer them and also if needed to have town hall meetings where parents can come in and learn more about exactly how this differs from the start testing. Right. So here are our scores coming. So um, in our Roseman Elementary, uh, excuse me, Roseman High School results, 11th grade only, um, looking at the total percentages for um, uh, basic, what well, used to be basic, uh, proficient, and um, excelling. We have nearly met, met, and exceeded. So uh, we are looking at approximately our language arts for 11th graders at 81%, and um, a for math at 42%. And 42% for math in the 11th grade is is normal to have a very low, much lower range because by then they've tried. Um, Algebra one multiple times, and they've usually struggled, and usually they're taking an alternative math class. So, uh, rare earth test results, uh, you can see are um, extremely low, and we have to very much work on that, but, but also the number of students that took this in rare earth was also extremely low, so um, just one or two students not doing well can throw it off pretty uh, dramatically. Okay. So, Tropico. Tropico, we had in English language arts, we had 56%, um, meaning met, nearly met, or exceeded, and in mathematics, 47%. Okay. In West Park, uh, we have 48% in our uh, English language arts and 54% in our math. And then finally, Roseman Elementary School. Uh, we have 46% in our English language arts and 51% in our math. And the last one shows us as a district. So as a district, you can see that we are about 54% in nearly met, met, and exceeded. And uh, that would be for our uh, English language arts. And in math, we're at 49%. And the next one. So here's where we're going to start. Your, we will bring more reports for you. So one of the things that we addressed uh, in our LCAP plan was uh, more support for our English learners. And we have a high amount of English learners in our district compared to most districts. And you can see that um, we are at 25% for English language arts and 34% for math uh, for our English learners. And then next. And for our socio economically disadvantaged uh, students were at 52 and 48 percent respectively and that's 
typical for us to mirror since we are at 90% um, unduplicated count, which is a combination of your EL and socioeconomically disadvantaged students. So that more reflects of the overall district standard. But both of these subgroups are subgroups that we're going to be targeting as we move forward with our LCAP plan. So how do we, next one, so how do we look towards um, the county, which is more reflective of where we're kind of at? So overall for county, we, um, we are in exceeded, we're a little bit below county, and county's the gray and we're the blue, by the way, the state is the green. Um, and so we're, as you see, we trend a little bit below county and exceed in met. We're a little bit higher than county in nearly met. So we're pretty close to county, but there's some work that needs to be done there. And then, of course, overall, we definitely need some work to, uh, to get our scores up a little bit. Now, all of, as you see in county, all of our superintendents we talked, we're, we're seeing a significant drop in, in what we could see overall perceived scores. But you have to remember, these students are now learning different standards. They're learning in a different style. And they're taking a test um, on computers that also require an in-class assignment uh, taught by a teacher and then a response to that inside. So it's a lot different than the STAR testing. It's something that they're going to need to get used to over a few years. But this is now our baseline. And from the baseline, this is how we'll be judged moving forward and how we improve those scores. So I think um, you know we have our work cut out for us, but I think that with our new technology as well as um, the great job our teachers are doing, I think we'll see some significant increases in the next coming years. And that is it for the superintendent's report. Thanks, sir. Consent items. Make a motion to approve consent items. Dave Wright. Mr. Starkey. District. All in favor? Aye. 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 Personnel. Make a motion to approve all personnel. consorting our representatives of Harold Romey and Debbie Keyes to sit on the advisory council for the 8086. This is a grant that we're hoping will feed us about $1.5 million per year over the next three years. Make a motion to approve resolution 15-16-06. Mr. Starkey. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Curriculum and instruction for the report. <coughs> Williams uniform complaint. Mr. Yes, so we had uh, during the months of July, August, and September, we had one complaint filed which was responded to and correction was made almost immediately upon receiving the complaint. So we were in full compliance. I'll make a motion to go to public hearing. Mr. Sparky. Second. Good chair. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So information for public and the board, we received our Williams Settlement um, reports from the county. We had one finding coming with curriculum and textbooks. It was in kindergarten at West Park concerning science um, in kindergarten. So. Um, we have uh, ordered the uh, additional books needed as well as converted some books so that kindergarten is now in compliance with um, that. Aye. 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 Aye.